Hello, welcome to this session. So, uh, by now we have completed uh, the system level PLL design. We have uh, also looked at the oscillator design at transistor level and we are continuing our uh, PLL design with the design of each block at circuit level. So, the next building block which we would like to study now is uh, phase frequency detector. Okay, PLL building blocks, the journey continues, okay, it is phase frequency detector. So, earlier we have seen the phase frequency detector, but treating them as ideal. Uh, now, we will look at uh, what happens in the real case. So, the three state PFT or phase frequency detector which we have seen is, I am drawing it again. You have a D flip flop whose input D is always connected to VDD, right, and which has a clock and output Q. These two flip flops, this particular flip flop is used, okay. So, yeah, here you have a clock R going in, V here, the output of these two clocks, these two flip flops, they go to AND gate and by the way, if we, if they go to AND gate and if we recall the sources of nonlinearities in PLLs, there is a delay also added by adding a buffer to the PFT, right and you have a reset signal here. This is up and this is down signal. Okay. The transfer function or the input to output characteristics of this PFT is average of up minus down with respect to phase error. We have seen it is something like this. Okay. So, this is what we have. This is 2 pi and this is minus 2 pi. Now, whatever we are seeing here, this is a ideal case. What happens uh, or what is the thing which we neglected earlier, but now we are going to consider is the delay of each block. So, there is a T clock to Q delay uh, and you can say whenever your uh, R or V changes after how much time your up or down signal will change clock to Q delay for flip flop. This is some finite delay by the way. Okay. Then you have T reset to Q delay. So, it is reset to Q delay for flip flop. You have uh, NAND delay T NAND 2. So, this is NAND gate delay when the input changes uh, for the NAND gate after how much time your output will change. Okay. And then you have the del extra delay which you added uh, for the overlap. Okay. So, this is like just the buffer delay. Now, in the presence of all these delays, let us look at how the output signals will change. So, I will still use a simple R and V. like this. Okay. Let us say the frequencies are same to keep life easy here and V signal is this. Okay. Fine. So, this is V. Now, in response to R signal, our up signal will go high after some time. It does not go high immediately. It goes high after some time. This is up and what is that some time? Well, that time is the this time is T clock to Q delay. 
for the flip flop. Then when you get V signal, the down signal will also go high after the same amount of time. So it goes high here. So both these up and down signal are high at this time. Then when you get up and down signals both high, then after the delay of these two blocks, your reset will go high. So the reset goes high after the delay of NAND plus TD. So I will just make it, let us say like this. So reset goes high after this time. This is your T NAND 2 plus T NAND 2 plus TD, the delay of the buffer. Once the reset goes high, then up signal and down signal will go low. So up signal and down signal will go low after reset to Q delay. So this delay is T reset to Q. Okay. Then when both the signals are down, then the reset signal will also go down after another T NAND2 plus delay. Okay, this is the same T NAND2 plus TD. So, let us just look at the transitions R triggers this after delay T C K to Q, V triggers down, both up and down, then they trigger reset. Reset is going to trigger both the signals uh, up and down to go low, but that is reset to Q, okay. And then your reset, when up and down both go high, then these two signals trigger is set to go low. So, this is how the actual transition happens. So, now the time for which the reset signal is high that is T reset is equal to you can look from here what is this? This is T reset to Q plus T NAND 2 plus T D. This is the time for which the reset signal is high. The other important thing which we need to know, what is the time duration during which both up and down signals are high? That time duration is this, is not it? And what is that value that I call that as T overlap? T overlap is this plus T reset to Q. So, now you see in this particular case that your T reset to Q, right, signal or T reset the time during which the reset is active, that time is the same as the time during which overlap uh, is there between up and down pulses. So now for uh, no dead zone problem. zone problem in PFT, we need finite or you can say depending on the requirement large T overlap. In order to increase T overlap, the only options if we are using or the control which we have is go and vary TD. But when we are going and varying the TD, what also happens is that your T reset also increases. Well, increasing T reset is a problem or not, uh, right now we do not know, but we will soon know about it. Okay. So, if that is the case, 
uh, what we know is that in order to have a larger T overlap, we have to increase TD because that is the controllable part we have NAND in a given technology you can have a finite NAND gate delay or reset to Q delay, right. Uh, so, TD is something which you can reduce, you can remove the buffer, TD will be 0, you can add more buffers, TD will increase. But what happens is at the same time your T reset also increases. Now, if T reset increases, then what happens? So, when you have V pulse let us say coming very close to the when the phase error is quite large, okay. So, when the phase error is quite large, you have you start with a large phase error. So, in that case, what you do is rising edge go high here, your up signal will go high at this point, T reset to Q, it remains high, it waits for the time when V signal goes high, okay. Now, when V signal goes high at that point, okay, your down signal goes high. So, let us remove this, yeah. So, my down signal will come here, okay. I am just using the previous drawing, okay. So, that uh, something is repeated here. So, down signal remains low for a long time. It goes high after whatever your uh, clock to Q delay and then up signal remains at the same point. Then both up and uh, down both the signals are high. After some time your reset signal goes high. When your reset signal goes high, at that time, so let us just do slightly, not much change, I am just doing it here, okay. So, reset signal goes high, when reset goes high, what happens is uh, your up and down signal both go low and when they both go low, then your reset goes high later. So, this is the clock which you have. Now, interestingly, you see this. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, it changes here, this changes this one and then down signal because down goes high that triggers the reset. So, this is what you see and then what you are going to have is uh, when both up and down signal go low, your finally your reset signal will also go low. Problem is not this, problem is the rising edge of the next transition is actually appearing between the reset when the reset is high, okay. So, when the reset in a given flip flop, when the reset signal is high at that particular instant of time, okay, no changes at the input will be taken into account, okay. So, no when, when the reset signal is high and no changes are taken into account, then what happens is that during this, this transition is missed. So, if you miss this trans this particular transition, right, if you miss this particular transition, then in the next transition, you will see the rising edge on V appearing first. If you look at this clock cycle, right, the phase error is large positive value. So, you will get up minus down average accordingly, but what happens because you miss this transition due to the finite reset time. In the next clock cycle, what is going to happen is that you will get the rising edge on V first and rising edge on uh, R later. So, this these two transitions will now change e the sign of the feedback together, okay, and then it will continue with the negative only because now the it appears that the phase error is uh, uh, minus of 
2 pi minus some value, this is a negative phase error, right? Uh, it is not like the large phase error which you see here any more. So, in the presence of your uh, finite reset time, what happens is that For a small phase error, your output input to output characteristics remain same. Then when the phase error increases beyond a certain value, you run into this problem. Okay, and when you have this problem, then the average of up minus down will go negative. Okay, and then it will do something like this. And this by the way, this is still 2 pi. So, it is going to happen on both the sides. This is still is minus 2 pi. If you are looking in terms of phase error, then this phase error is we are drawing with respect to phase error. This is 2 pi times T reset divided by T r where T r is your reference frequency reference period. Okay. So, what do you see the curve which was uh, uh, having the same sign for positive or the neg negative frequency error, suddenly that curve has started having both positive and negative values for the positive phase error itself. Now, the one of the extreme cases will happen when the T reset increases to such a large value that this particular waveform becomes like this, where the average of the positive and the average of the negative or the sum of these two in one uh, 2 pi phase error is 0. That is the worst case. If that happens, then you cannot use the phase frequency detector for frequency detection at all because this will become similar to your XOR gate, uh, uh, similar to your exclusive or uh, phase detector or your SR latch based phase detector where the average value of the phase detector output right for given frequency error is going to be 0. So, it cannot detect frequency any more. So, the usable frequency okay has a limit and what is the limit that this particular phase error 2 pi t reset by t r has to be less than pi which implies that t reset has to be less than t r by 2 which is nothing but 1 by 2 f r. Okay? So, I can very well say that f r is less than 1 divided by 2 t reset. So, for a given uh, uh, reset time, there is an upper limit of upper limit on the reference frequency, which you can use for the given PFT. If your T reset is large, your reference frequency which you can use to clock the PFT will also be smaller. Okay? So, uh, what happens is uh, that uh, whenever you design a PFT, you should make sure that your reset period is uh, not limiting your uh, reference frequency. Normally, it does not unless your reset period is uh, quite large or you would like to have the reference frequency also quite large. Okay? So, that is the case which you uh, need to take into account. And by the way, even when uh, you do not have your uh, reset period large enough that you are getting pi here, uh, pi for the phase error, even when it has a small negative value, it is going to increase your pull-in time for the PLL because even for the positive phase error, there will be time when you will have uh, uh, incorrect feedback. Okay? So, it increases the pull-in time. So, normally you would like to have T reset as small as possible, but at the same time to avoid the dead zone problem in PFT, you would like to have T overlap region also as required or as large as large as required let me put it that way. Okay? So, uh, uh, there in order to uh, 
overcome this problem, we have other kind of PFDs also, which we will look in the next session. Thank you.